Welcome to Writing Wednesday, Episode 4. This week, we discover more about Garrett's past, remind readers that Garrett stole something from the Ramsley-owned hospital, and Parker thinks up some plausible but unlikely explanations to excuse his cousin's bad behavior. These are just some of the spoiler alerts as I write my rough draft, The Wedding, Book 10 of the Ramsley Brothers series. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, or click the bell to ensure that you don't miss a future video. These actions are free to you and help me with the algorithms to grow my audience. Happy Welcome reading! Welcome to Writing Wednesday. So, this particular week, we have kind of gone over some very interesting ground. In the last episode, we had Parker talking about his father and his relationship to him, and discussing how he is not James's son. And this week... We're going to discuss a little bit more about Garrick, as we said in the intro, because apparently we need to know more about him before we can get to the actual implications of what is going on with our FBI investigation. So let's start, oh, I don't know, from the top. It wasn't often Parker got the opportunity to hang out with all of his cousins and brothers anymore. The men decided to talk shop in a private room off the bar. Everyone wanted updates in the current FBI investigation into the businesses and the state of everyone's finances, since many of their businesses and personal accounts had been frozen from the investigation. Parker was curious if there were any new information. We're all very, very curious. Yes, Parker, we want to know. He also didn't know exactly what to say about James. So we're going to bring up this because we want to know that this is a topic that is uh, difficult to tread. James had been the one to turn his brothers into the FBI. He had come forward to clear his conscience and broker a deal for himself since he wanted to protect the hospital chain he owned. James had started this whole mess, which he kind of oh, confessed to at the beginning of convincing him. And the reason he did that was because he wanted to make sure that he could die with a clear conscience and that the business would not go under. Now I have a question. Would anybody like a little background music? I'm kind of curious whether that would add to the video or if it would detract from it. It might be too distracting, so put a comment in the comments and let me know what you think or would prefer that I continue to do with these lovely writing episodes, if you'd like a little background music. Anyhow, uh, do, 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 do. not that anyone besides Gabe, Parker, Marshall, and Dottie knew this, so they kept it within the family. Another family secret. They seem to have a lot of them. Parker felt like the secrets were starting to pile up. Add Garrett taking a drug from the hospital that wasn't his to take. Well, it just seemed to get more murkier and murkier in this family. Parker resolved to have a private word with his cousin this weekend. Technically his half-brother, but anyhow. So far, Garrett had been avoiding his calls. Parker was not going to let this go without an answer. There was no reason Garrett would need to have access to any of the medications at Ramsley Medical and Hospital Corporation. So I have to double check if it's RMHC or if it's HRHMC. I might have to fix that. It might be an edit. Worst case scenario, Garrett had a substance abuse issue and had grabbed the wrong medication in error, thinking it would give him a high or a relief from pain. Perhaps what that was what had happened. Years ago in college, Garrett, Nate, and Parker had been surfing some dangerous waves during spring ba break. Ugh, can't speak. Spring break. Parker had decided to pack it in, knowing the ocean was too extreme that day. He had been waiting on the shore for Nate and Garrett when Nate had returned alone. It had taken them precious minutes to find Garrett, then even longer to swim out to him using their boards. Garrett had been clinging to his in serious pain. It had taken nearly all of Parker's energy to get Garrett back to the beach with the help of Nate. So you see, before, Garrett had not been a pallbearer at his brother's funeral. And I don't know how I overlooked this, but it has turned into a fabulous new little quirk to the story. A little twist, a plot twist, shall we say where it's important to know that Garrett, you know, he can't do terribly much physical. And he may or may not have a substance abuse problem because he's in chronic pain now. So it's very interesting to know this and to put an extra little spin on his character 
And to have that background, rather than having him be a one-dimensional type of character, we have now added to his background and made him a little bit more interesting. And it's all because of a simple little accident that I had by not including very important information in the previous book. I mean, he should have been a pallbearer at Nate's funeral because he's his brother. But I didn't think about it. So I had... Who did I have as pallbearers? We had Henry. We had Ben. We had Michael. Jake. Oh, who's the oldest in the other family? What am I thinking? Gabe. And then I think Everett was also a pallbearer because they were very good friends. Yes, Everett was. But we never actually had Gabe, sorry, Garrett be a pallbearer. So I had to fix that and put an excuse in as to why. And now it has actually paid off because the character has more depth and it will speak to his future um, motives on his actions on what he chooses to do. So it's very good that way. So anyhow, uh, calling for help, eventually an ambulance arrived, carting the injured Garrett to a third-rate hospital. The country they were visiting had good tourism, yet bad infrastructure. Garrett had broken his back in multiple places, as Parker recalled. A skilled surgeon did what he could to stabilize him, and soon Parker had arranged for Garrett to be medically evacuated back home to one of the family hospitals where he could get top-notch care. So, you see already... Parker started to organize things back then, which is good for him. And Garrett now has his injury, which will bring him chronic pain throughout his life. And um, it's all because, again, as young guys with way too much money to spend and, you know, tolerant parents, going out to do different various events like Max did the mountain climbing. So did Dylan, you know, scuba diving. You know, air, parachuting on airplanes, visiting all sorts of different weird places. They just have access to these experiences before they go into the family business. So we've kind of tailored that into it again, which is wonderful. And Garrett had been lucky. He could still walk. He didn't have full range of movement, but over 80%. He still suffered from constant back pain and flare-ups, it was one of the reasons he hadn't been a pallbearer for his brother, Nate. It would simply be too much for him. For a man who had been very athletic, it would have been very difficult to now live constrained. Garrett might very well have a drug problem, reflected Parker. It wasn't like he and his cousin were close anymore. Things change, and chronic pain could be difficult to live with. So, Parker's trying to figure out a reason why Garrett stole this drug. He's thinking that maybe, maybe Garrett just made a mistake. You know, he thought it was something else. It's not something else. It's not something that he could use to get high or to alleviate his pain or whatever he needed. Um, that is not the case, uh, but Parker doesn't know that. So we're, we're working toward that truth to find out why this particular drug was taken at that particular time. And I mean, some people might have their suspicions. But are they right? Are they wrong? We'll have to find out as we go along. So, yes. And, you know, the thing is, too, it's it's a very interesting and delicate subject to write about. But the good news is that's not his trouble. Even though Parker somewhat suspects it might be. But, I mean, he's trying to make allowances for his cousin. Because he grew up with him obviously they did things together and uh he does appreciate their shared history you know how sometimes people make excuses for others and they don't want to see the bad in them just because of the past relationship yeah it's just the way it is not necessarily saying that something has gone bad with garrett it's just this is their current relationship so best case scenario someone had asked garrett to get the needed medication it was plausible. Garrett looked a lot like Gabe. An attendant could have thought he was Gabe and asked for the meds. Unusual, but not impossible. However, there was no reason for Garrett to know the code to the dispensary. Nor did Parker know why Garrett had been in the hospital. Oh, I'm going all the way up because I have to double check something. 
So we got a little lost in the story. I'm probably checking either hmm, a previous fact of some sort at the time. Do you think I could remember? Huh, no. I'm just checking to see if I mentioned something, or maybe if I hadn't mentioned it, maybe I would redo it right here. But I don't think it was an issue. I think I just found that, yes, I had mentioned whatever, so I keep going on in the particular story. So again, it was unusual but not impossible. However, there was no reason for Garrett to know the code to the dispensary. So the dispensary is where they keep all their hospital drugs. Nor did Parker know why Garrett would have been in the hospital that day. If security hadn't noticed the video footage and alerted Parker about it, they might not have known anything about the incident at all. Now, isn't that terrible? We would want to know more about the incident, absolutely. But like we said in the previous book, they had just found it out. Um, I feel like they've had maybe probably about three weeks or so to to work on finding out more about this, but it has taken a bit of a back burner. And the reason it's taken a bit of a back burner is because they've been busy trying to get their lives set up because of their father's ultimatum. Because James had made them, you know, just drop everything and uh, get married within the month. Again, that draconian, not quite sure it should be legal, <laughs> a set of demands in order for them to inherit their inheritance. So, Parker had immediately tightened security and changed the codes of the hospitals, as he should. Anybody who has a security problem should take steps to remediate it. This wasn't going to happen again under his watch. Yes. See, Parker firmly believes that he is going to continue in his current role with the hospital series. Um, he may get some, some disturbing news in that factor. Parker had a deliberate look. No, he's not deliberate. Parker had a look at Garrett deliberately sitting across the table from him. So when they got to the lovely room, I might clarify this with a little bit more verbiage, just to basically say that he purposely chose a seat across from him when everybody else is getting seated, just, you know, add a little bit more detail, things like that, because he wants to get a gauge, or sorry, he wants to gauge what his cousin is doing. He wants to see how he looks. He wants to know what's going on, because obviously they have an unresolved issue. Garrett seemed his usual grumpy self, and considering he has chronic pain, I don't blame him for being grumpy. He didn't appear to have any signs of a drug user. He wasn't underweight, he wasn't tired looking, his hygiene was good. Parker frowned. He knew that many people managed to lead high-functioning lives, even as addicts. There weren't always signs to be seen. Maybe I should edit that into outward signs to be seen. Because, I mean, sometimes there's interior signs, but you never really know what's going on with another person, do you? I mean, you're not inside their head. You don't know their thoughts, their feelings, the what they're going to do next. Although I get to play with my characters, and sometimes I don't know what they're going to do next either. They just tell me. Other times, I try to force them into situations. And as I have said many, many times, the best thing that you can do with a character when you're writing them is think to yourself, what's the worst that can happen? Put them through the worst that can happen, and then make it worse. And make it worse again. And then throw something else on top of the fire. And let them see how do they get out of the dumpster show that is their life. <laughs> the dumpster fire, I should say. That is their life. I usually do it times four. How bad can I make something in their lives? And then kind of work it out from there. So, you know, we've got money laundering. We've got drug trafficking. We've got their bank accounts frozen. What else can I throw into the mix? Oh, wait. <laughs> we will find out. Possibly in this book. So, yes, everything's kind of going not so great for this family. Which is fine. I mean, they, they've got some stuff to get through and they've had an easier life before. So, let's make things a little harder. Because what is a story without a little drama? you got to have some drama. you got to have some some juice behind the scenes to see what's going on. So Garrett looked up from his phone. His eyes met Parker steadily. Dismissing him, he turned his attention to the conversation at hand. 
So Garrett just right away kind of went, hmm, yeah, I don't need to deal with you right now, and turned his attention elsewhere. Slightly arrogant, a little bit of hubris going on there. You know, just just a lot of pride in that, and uh, I don't have to put up with you sort of thing, which is quite the vibe going on. Parker supposedly ought to be paying better attention as well, because, I mean, really, right now is not the time to confront his cousin, although it would be very interesting to see what everyone else may or may not say during the confrontation. But I think we will leave that where it is as it is. So he's going to, uh, we're going to learn more about our fabulous FBI investigation, the financials of each and every company, and then present a small solution which will help them in the interim while they are waiting so that they do get a small amount of relief. Because you can't always keep dumping on this family and not give them something in return. So that is the goal for this particular chapter, to get to that end. Um, we've been working hard on it. <laughs> and as you can see, we're already over 50,000 words. Or maybe you can't see it because my little person is in the way. Me, writing. With my resting, you know, face. <laughs> I look so impressed as I write. But uh, that's okay. There's some breaking news underneath me. Breaking news. Parker has discovered that Garrett may be lying to everyone. Yes. Breaking news. We still have not met Marshall's bride. Although we have in the book, but the rest of the crew hasn't. Well, it's going to be interesting. So let's pay better attention. Ramsley Pharma is tight, Noah was saying. Michael and Anne have been putting some of his savings from his inheritance from our grandfather into the company. Yeah, that's an interesting thing. I think because Michael is 10 years older, he's the first one born, you know, that everybody thought was the legitimate heir of David, which may or may not be true, considering David has other children and uh, Rachel's not necessarily wife number one. So, anyhow, Grandpa, at some point, before he passed away, gave his money to Michael, which, honestly, wise move on his part, because his other sons aren't much to live up for. So, <laughs> you know, David, Robert, Oscar, and James are not the greatest of guys, although some of them, I think, were just led a little astray. I think Robert, for the most part, was a good person. James, eh. Oscar's weak. And as for David, we all know he's a bit of a sociopath. He's our favorite villain, our guy to hate. But anyhow, so Michael has inherited money from his grandfather. And uh, now he's putting that into the company to keep it afloat. Many of our shareholders are foregoing their portion of draws this year. There will be no dividends. Stock values are down, which is no surprise. We have had a few offers to sell certain assets at a significant loss to our competitors. The lawyers have cautioned against this because they believe the profits from each from such sales would simply be frozen and not allowed to be used for cash flow purposes for the company anyways. How long can your company hold out? questioned Jake. Maybe four more months? shrugged Noah. We are still profitable, we just can't access our accounts. In four months, we have supplier contracts coming due and can't continue without accessing more cash. Because they got to bring in, you know, basically, they're pharmaceutical, right? So they have to bring in the supplies to make the pharmaceuticals to go out. So all your pill bottles, all your little cotton swabs, all your seals, all your drugs, you know, because they put it together. Oops, make a noise. They put it, this is what happens when my hands get expressive. I touch things and it makes noise. Anyhow, they put it all together, right? So they have all these suppliers that they need to pay, but their accounts are frozen. And they also have to pay, like, payroll, all sorts of stuff. Uh, can't continue without accessing more cash. My goal is keeping up payroll, otherwise our workers would be walking by now. 
I could put something in, offered Max. Well, we all know Max is pretty broke. I mean, he's doing well. He's got his own company now. It's a demolition company. But let's put it this way. He and Paget are finally, after a long time of scrimping and saving, comfortably living. And they're finally starting to bring back up their financial position and their savings. And, you know, they're just getting restarted after a big, a big, uh, um broke period where they had no money so it's nice for max to offer but honestly he can't give much noah shook his head drop in the bucket you aren't rich enough besides if push comes to shove l and the kids might be moving in with you with only l's salary we have let the nanny go and are just paying the bills it's a vicious cycle now that being said i might have to um double-check my next chapter where the ladies are speaking together because we might have mentioned something about nannies there and I have to make sure that Elle reveals that they let theirs go or just skip over that entirely for her because it might be a little bit of a sore subject or maybe it's just not necessary for the uh, improvement of or the furthering of the storyline. Right? So if it doesn't contribute to your storyline, nine times out of ten, you just don't need it and it needs to be cut. So in this case, I might have said mentioned something in the next chapter, and it's not needed because we've mentioned it here, and Noah has said it. So I don't have to necessarily bring it up again. Um, have the FBI given any indication when they are going to wrap up the investigation? When we can gain control of our assets again, wondered Jake. Nothing definite, replied a grim Everett. So Everett has been going along with Bree. Bree's the little bounty hunter, and Jake is going along with Sterling, otherwise known as Sarah Lee Hawkins. So Sterling was a previous tabloid reporter, and that was really fun. Stranded by the billionaire, and in pursuit of a billionaire, Two of my fun little, um, more, more, comed, more comedy in there. It was funnier. Um, little storylines that did a lot of uh, adding to the story arc of David and of, uh, of the overall family dynamic when regards to the scandal that's going on. So, nothing definite, said, replied a grim Everett. Bree has been trying to talk to Agent Kepler about this. She and Kepler have a history. Actually, they used to kind of date, only they didn't really date. It was more using each other. They're good at that, <laughs> using each other and being pseudo-friends. I don't think Kepler really has friends. Uh, I don't think he really cares to have friends. But anyhow, it's it's an interesting way of doing things. But uh, yeah, that source has dried up. He's not talking to them anymore about it because he got David, so he doesn't need their help anymore. What he needs to do is figure out how to wind up his investigation and get the charges done. Um, oh, we put in another one because, yes, I thought that we should mention that Sterling has been trying to find out information for our, the family, but hasn't been able to make much progress. Because as we said, did say, Sterling is a tabloid reporter, so she would have her own sources, and Brie would have her sources. So, you know, these two ladies are very helpful in that regard. Um, ooh, oh, another question. What about the Colburns? Were they there at this particular dinner? I mean, I did make mention. I did make mention of how they were accepted in the family. I didn't say they were there for dinner, but it kind of implied that they were. In which case, are the Colburns here? Or are they elsewhere? Oh, I didn't even think about whether Drew or Molson were in this scene or not. Oh, that's a good point. So now I'm going to have to think through whether they are there or not. Whether they arrive tomorrow. Maybe they just arrived tomorrow and they expected... Well, I mean, they can't drop shit. Uh, 
excuse my language, I was about to say a really bad word, um, but they can't drop a lot of money on a weekend like these people can. So maybe they are not here. Maybe they arrive tomorrow morning and they just plan to be there for the one day, but then they find out that their stay is paid for. Huh. Hmm. I didn't even think of that. Timing. Timing is everything, right? Sometimes you find these little nuggets in between in how to um how to put things forward. <laughs> in which case, I have to mention in this particular chapter that they are absent. Okay, so we'll go from there. I'll just have to sneak that in into my previous mention of the lovely Colburns. Okay. So... Bria's been trying to talk to Agent Kepler about this. She and Kepler have a history. However, he's currently keeping mum. We did have a word. We did have word that something might happen soon, though. A source. An unnamed source. Don't you just love unnamed source? You don't have to give any information whatsoever. It's just a source said there might be new charges. New charges? Inquired Ben with a frown. Yeah, no idea what my, they might be, though. Mm, I know what they are. It's not going to go well, Everett. So Everett shrugged. We should know soon enough if the source is right. And if you'll notice in the bottom photo, I'm talking to Bean again, who has decided that she must bark and bark and bark. She wanted to play. And honestly, I only have a few more minutes left, so it's like, I love you, Bean, but we're just going to take a moment and not do this. So, they're discussing their new charges. Yeah, no idea what they might be, though, shrugged Everett. We should know soon enough if the source is right. Good, said Dylan quietly. Good, questioned the surprised Max. Why would that be good? Dylan sighed. I'm tired of living under this, living with this over our heads. If the FBI would just charge us, we could properly fight the charges, assuming we can still afford lawyers. It beats living in limbo, waiting for the worst to come. Can they even do this to us? inquired Henry. Is it even legal to just freeze our assets, merely put us out of business and not charge anyone? The, lawyer we are, the lawyers are fighting it, but it's the FBI, stated Jake. They have some clout. I'm not sure exactly what I wanted to say there. I don't like that word. You might have to revise it. But yeah, I can understand how Dylan is kind of sick and tired of it. You know, when you know something's coming up and it's going to be bad and you're just like, could we just get it over already? You know, could we get it over already, get it passed and then deal with it and move forward? At least that's me. Other people might want to put it off forever, but just get it done. Pull the bandit off. Rip it off. Doesn't matter how painful it is, you can just get past it and go to the other side. Ah, plus warrants were obtained. Yes, and it's funny because I might have things totally backwards on how they work in real life. But again, this is a work of fiction, so any mistakes you can just say, oh, it's a work of fiction, whatever. You know, the judicial system is not um, my forte. <laughs> I do know a little bit about it, not as much as I know about other matters. Um, ask me about insurance. I know a great deal about that. I know a great deal about all sorts of odds and ends, but not really as much about the law, despite my many years of watching lawyer dramas on television. But anyhow, so speaking of insurance, they're asking how the insurance business is going. So we're going to leave it here since we've run out of time. And thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Writing Wednesday. Please share, click the link to like it, hit that bell, you know, so that you can find the videos later and let your friends know about how much you enjoy this channel. So take care and here's a little bonus video of Bean again. <laughs>